Hi everyone, very nice to see so many of you here. And hi Sarah, and thank you for joining me here um, to talk about uh, building outstanding teams. Very happy to have you here. Thank you very much and thanks for having me. Yes, um, let's start. We have a lot of questions to go through and we want to hear your opinion. So um, let's start with perhaps not the easiest question, but in your view, what do you think is the most important factor in creating an outstanding team? What, what does it mean to create an outstanding team? Yeah, that's a very, very important question. And I think that you all heard in many different speeches from uh, this morning, at least, that people topics were so important when you want to build a very strong business. And it's also the most, or one of the most complicated thing to build. So um, if we just maybe ask ourselves, what does it mean to be outstanding? Because outstanding, like, it's a nice word, but what's behind? I think that outstanding team means uh, to me two main elements. The first one is that we have very uh, high uh, motivated and engaged uh, people. And also, uh, second, that they are uh, performing super well. And I think that if I have to uh, pick one element that is the foundation of all of that, it's also about culture first. Yes, indeed. Culture is extremely important. Uh, and continuing on that, uh, how does Conto define and communicate its culture to both current team members and new hires in the company? So, um, as it has been said uh, during the introduction, so I joined Conto seven years ago. It was a very small startup and now we are 1,600 people, so the company is totally different. And I'm going to tell you um, a story when uh, I joined because I usually when I talk about culture, I like telling this story. But uh, it was one of my first days when I arrived at Conto and the two founders who are really amazing, they were super proud because they organized kind of a brainstorming around what are our values. And um, I was kind of new in the company and when I looked at the result, I was like, well, that's not really what I feel when I'm talking to you. So uh, what I advised them at that time was, let's step back. You don't have to include the people in what you want to build and how you want to build the culture at the very beginning. Culture is really about something really deep, especially when you're a founder, you really need to think about what kind of company you want to build and it's really personal. So I think that the first thing about defining culture is about really, really think about who you are as a founder and what you want to build and what kind of company you want to build. Then of course, when you are growing, it's not enough. So um, to make sure that it's scaling, you also need to make it more uh, formalized, uh, that you need also to create some content. You need to uh, be more explicit uh, what you mean when you put a word such as integrity or ownership. Like what do you mean exactly and how it's going to be translated in the very concrete actions on a daily basis for employees. Yes, um, thank you. Well, do you have any, any, um, any examples of how, how Conto brings its values to the everyday life of, the, of every employee in the company? So at the very beginning, we had actually these values and uh, they were pretty simple uh, with a very small definition. And it was a first start. And of course, uh, on the field, what we also wanted is making sure that the managers and the leadership team were really, really embodying these values. Um, so we had the chance to also create what we call the, the lean office because we are really inspired by the lean culture at Conto. And uh, we created the lean office with some people who were really delivering and coaching on a daily basis. Uh, and the, the founders were also super involved um, uh, on that. And um, after some time, we also decided that the, the values were not uh, enough and clear enough and it was also a good moment uh, at, at, at one point to ask ourselves okay do we still believe that these values are accurate and I think that it's also something important on like culture elements to understand that it's moving and that uh, it's capturing what you want to be but also 
uh, what you are and what you want to be in the future. Mm. That's why you can also allow you to change some of your cultural elements uh, to drive changes actually uh, for your teams. And uh, one year ago, we decided to define what we call the leadership principle. So honestly, it's very famous. We were not the first ones uh, building that. For example, Amazon have done that very, uh, uh, very, uh, very well. And so we, what we wanted is actually making more clear for the, the employees what we meant behind our values. And I think that to be very, very concrete, then it's a step-by-step -step process. You need to have uh, and to talk about your culture and who you are uh, in your uh, website, uh, in your job description. You need to talk about that also when you have your hiring process. So your talent acquisition teams need to be very clear on how to pitch uh, the culture of the company because then the talents are going to choose and they are going to be really really, really picky on what kind of company are you and what kind of experience they're going to have uh, mm. by joining you. So you need to be very, very clear on all of that. And then when you join Conto, we really, really invest on onboarding. And I guess that we're going to come back on that uh, later on. But onboarding is a very key piece uh, to make sure that all your employees are really understanding what you want and how uh, the company is basically working. And I think that then on a daily basis, you always need to talk about that. So for example, same, nothing really uh, incredible, but I guess that you are all doing all hands or whatever, like you have your own rituals with your team. And it's important to illustrate some of your values in the uh, achievements you have or the projects you have. So for example, we are valuing a lot the question of teamwork. And when people are working well together and that we are achieving something great, we're going to illustrate the fact that, yes, we do believe that teamwork is a key element to succeed. And we talk also about culture when we're talking about business. Yes, thank you. Uh, and uh, as a fellow uh, people person, I completely agree with what you mentioned about the values and them being actually concretely visible and also the fact that they change as the people change. As the, as the company grows, so does the culture, so, so do the values. They need to be able to um, um, change. Um, then um, you already mentioned about uh, bringing the values um, or making the values visible during the hiring process. But when you are looking to bring new people onto the team, what are the specific qualities um, or values that you prioritize specifically? So um, actually, it's true that we really need to make sure that hiring is super clear, as I said, and then onboarding is also super key. Um, I think that onboarding is one of the, the, the piece I worked on when I uh, joined Conto with very clear uh, elements to put in place such as, okay, because we're going to hire a lot, we need to make sure that people are going to join uh, in group and we are going to uh, make sure they are uh, sitting uh, for a week uh, all together and really participate to uh, some specific sessions. And I have one anecdote on onboarding that is quite interesting and some people are quite surprised because again we are 1,600 across uh, five countries, five offices. Um, actually the founders are still participating to all onboarding sessions. They are coming, both of them, and pitching Contos culture Conto's business model, what they accept, and what is the trajectory they accept, they ex accept sorry, for the company. So it's super important to have, them, uh, to have them on board. And now coming back to what you said, like, do we look for some specific uh, skills? I think um, we can talk about behaviors and competencies. It's true that we are making sure that we are going to share easily the culture. And I think that if I have to name three main elements at Conto, I would say that first, we really want to make sure that we have a, a high level of openness because we are really pushing for continuous improvement culture, meaning that you will receive feedback and that we are going to 
push a bit the status quo and that you are um, uh, you are going to be uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, or you are going to receive some feedback that you uh, were not expecting. So you, you need to have a very high level of humility uh, to embrace that and really continuously improve the way you work. I think that the second point would be uh, making sure that uh, actually you have a structured mindset. It's really important, at least at Conto, but we define that because we want to have things super clear. Uh, what you are uh, working on, do you have KPIs uh, that you are following uh, on? Uh, do you have a clear visual management? What is the impact you want to create and so on? And all of that needs to be super clear. And we are working, for example, on Notion that many of you must know, but uh, it's really important to have like really structured mindset. And last but not least, I would say that we are looking for um, doer spirit. I mean, we've heard also a lot of, about that, like velocity, like shipping fast. It's something like really key uh, in our world. And so we need to keep even at the highest level the ability to make sure that people can really uh, can be really hands-on and really ship very fast. So these are, the, I would say, the three elements that we are looking for at Conto. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Um, then talking about um, diversity and inclusion, which are, of course, very important topics in, in recruitment and in, in building an outstanding team consists of people from diverse backgrounds. So how do you ensure diversity and inclusion while also focusing on hiring for the cultural fit? Mm. That's a very interesting question that we always ask when you talk about strong culture then comes the question about, but then how do you have and how do you build a diverse uh, team? Because sometimes it can sound that they are like actually uh, uh, against each other. And actually it's not the case. I think that it's important to understand that at Conto, we have, and I have some KPIs, like we, we do have 45% women in the leadership team, which is super rare in the tech industry. We also have 78 different nationalities, which is like amazing. So diversity, and it's not, I mean, diversity is really broad, um, and, and, but it's just to illustrate that we do have a very diverse team, even if we have a strong culture, and it's possible to do so. I think that's what you need to be careful on, and uh, we've worked a lot about, uh, about this point uh, with my team and with the founders, is making sure that when you are looking for some common competencies, they are not going to bring you only the same persona. Because if you are looking only stuff like analytical, uh, really mathematical, uh, uh, like very uh, strong uh, uh, profiles with strong energy and so on, then you might have like the same persona coming from the same background, like engineer, Mail and so on. So you need to really be careful on. It's it's great to be clear on what you are looking for, but sometimes step back and say, okay, it also allows me to have a very high diverse team. Yes, thank you. And and continue on that theme. Um, can you share some unique challenges that you've encountered while building teams that are, um, consist of people across um, different cultures and and. Uh, um, countries yes that that's that's um that's a big challenge and it's still a big challenge so as i was saying so conto is operating from a business perspective we are uh, in europe operating in eight countries and we have five offices but actually people are working from all around the world because uh and thanks to the remote i would i would say and so um, um what what's important is uh, uh having this in mind because you will when you scale you will see that there is um, a big difference between the headquarter and what you live in the headquarter and the branches and sometimes you need to really proactively be super super careful on okay am i inclusive enough in what i'm saying because actually i have a serbian team based in belgrade and when i'm saying that from paris or from berlin is it going to resonate to them? So you really need to adjust the way you um, set up your processes, you uh, launch your projects, or even your communicate. So you really need to be a, 
uh, careful on, on, on that. Then I think that, that you need to think about what kind of company you want to be. Because you can have a, a very global approach saying that I want the same culture everywhere in all the departments and all the countries, or acknowledging the fact that Yes, I have, a, I have a baseline and then we will have like local culture uh, coming up and that's fine. And um, we had in HR several questions about like, oh, I don't understand, French people are in France, you can do this or you have this amount of paternity leaves and uh, in Germany it's not the same and we would like to have the same because they like they feel they, they are part of the same company. So you need a lot of pedagogy to say, yes, we are actually one company, but we also have legal differences, cultural differences that we need to embrace. And I would say the last point that is really interesting about cultural stuff is that sometimes it's actually the root cause of some like people issues, like, I don't know, like a project is not working super well. You are trying to find what are the root causes and at the end of the day, you realize that actually this is because it's a German team and they don't work like that. And so how we can really make it different and uh, make the communication clearer and so on. So really embracing the fact that uh, we do have very diverse uh, team members. Yes, thank you for sharing. It's, it's definitely not a simple matter. Um, well, what advice would you give to leaders looking up to build trust and openness within their teams? There are probably many people in the audience who are, are um, interested to hear. Mm. Trust is also a key foundation if you want to build an outstanding team. Uh, we are talking uh, a lot about it and it's really important. If I'm coming back also uh, to the, 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 the early days, I remember that I had this um, feedback from the team and I, I, I was a bit hurt, like, no, I feel I'm like, we are trying to share information and so on, but people were not satisfied because they were learning, for example, that people were leaving the last day of, uh, of their job uh, at Conto and so on. And so they were a bit pissed about that. And then when you scale, you realize that if you really want to make sure that your people is trusting you, you need to, to communicate proactively. And you need to put in place, and we do have internal communication strategy that is quite robust at Conto, and we do invest on that because people have so many questions and they are so curious about everything. So you need to choose, but it's really important to be proactive. So from, I think that from a business wise, we are really trying to make sure uh, that during Holland's or uh, within our internal journal, we celebrate, we communicate proactively on what's going on. And from a people matters, because it's also super sensitive, we also need to push like, okay, when someone is leaving, we need to have a proper communication plan. We need to communicate as soon as someone knows, consider that everyone will know. And so you better keep uh, the, the, like, the, 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 the leadership of like what I want to communicate and how I want to communicate rather than letting that happen uh, by itself. So it's really important to, uh, to be clear and to be proactive on how you communicate internally. Yes, communication as well. Uh, not a simple matter either, but thank you for sharing that. Um, then talking about keeping your talent engaged, how, how does Conto um, manage to keep the top talent engaged and motivated? Uh, since there's also a lot of, um, I don't know, it's, it's hard to keep, keep the talent engaged sometimes. So we were talking at the very beginning about uh, motivation and performance. Well, at Conto, we have a definition of what is a mo the motivation, because we need to start with that. And we use one model and some others, but one that I really like, because it's pretty simple. What is motivation? Motivations actually are three things. Autonomy, mastery, and purpose. The one who said that is Dan Pink. If you want to uh, check this out on the internet, you'll find like very nice video to explain. So basically people want to have like challenges and really uh, like 
be able to deliver by themselves and be, have like this kind of freedom to, uh, to do their job. They really want to uh, uh, make sure that they uh, improve every day, like they learn stuff and they're getting better on what they're doing. And they want to understand why they're doing stuff. What is like the broader uh, objective or uh, overall sense? So um, as soon as you, you, you start working on, on that, then you need to create the conditions. So it's not an easy topic. And it's, uh, it's also an endless topic. I mean, there is no perfect recipe. But basically, what we want to do is making sure that people are super clear on what they're doing, that they have the right means and material to do their job, um, meaning that if they need more uh, resources, more tooling, more training, whatever, we will be there to support, making sure they're going to do their, their job. And of course, we, we are working from a nature perspective on how we build carry paths. So how we make sure that we do have like leveling and that you can grow over time and that you really feel valued for your skills and that you have also possibility to grow. It's like something really, really key. So we value internal promotion, uh, internal mobilities that are super key to make sure that people stay actually for a longer time at Conto. Yes, thank you. I was just going to ask about a program or an initiative, but I think you covered that already. Well, um, looking ahead, um, what kind of emerging trends do you think uh, will impa most impact the way we build outstanding teams in the next five years? Well, there are so many things to do today that uh, it's a, a very uh, um, complicated question, but I think that in five years we will still be in this AI, of course, uh, era, and we really need to make sure that we em embrace this, and especially in HR, there are so many things to do. Um, I think that now we realize that AI is not going to replace people, uh, it was maybe a misconception at the very beginning. So I think that now we really need to make sure that uh, people are really uh, knowledgeable about AI and really using AI to be more productive, effective, and really focusing on a really strong added value. Um, so this is something that really needs to be uh, uh, shaped in the, in, the coming, uh, in the coming years. I would say um, that actually tooling overall, uh, and especially in HR, like it's, I mean, they, they are not the best, uh, honestly, it's kind of complicated, but we really need to be more equipped in terms of KPIs, data, and tooling overall to um, simplify and streamline all the processes we have uh, across the companies. And I think that Last but not least, it's something that I really, and we were discussing that with uh, someone from my team earlier, about coaching. I think that we really, I mean, it's super democratized, the fact that when you are a leader, you need to be coached because when you're a leader, you're super lonely and you need to be supported externally and so on. And I really, really believe that you should start to be coached as soon as you get a manager role. Because it's so complex and like company success is about people, but if I go a bit further, it's also about management. Like the managers are really key in your organization that you really need to make sure that they are well equipped. So HR team can do a lot. Managers of manager can do a lot. But I think that making sure they are really accompanied and coached on a daily basis would be uh, super helpful. And this is something that should be democratized in the coming years. Yes, thank you. Then uh, maybe something that the audience might find uh, extremely interesting. Uh, if you could give one piece of advice to a founder building their first ever team, what would that advice be? First, I want to say good luck to all of you because it's not an easy uh, journey. Um, I think I, I read and I heard some debates about HR people. Do we need HR people? When do we need them? And are they really useful? Like, 
uh, I think it's really key for founders, and I hope they would answer that, that I really help them to shape Conto from the very beginning and finding the right partner. I would say in France, like 50 people in, in, in the company, it's the right moment because for many legal reasons, actually you need to uh, uh, process many things. But as soon as you need to, to hire a lot of people, you will need to focus on how to hire the best talent. What does it mean best talent for you? How you want to structure? What does it mean cultural la, 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 onboarding and everything we, we have mentioned? So bet on HR. I think it's, uh, it's something really important as soon as you feel you really need it. And take the right time to find the right person. Thank you. And as a, as a people person myself, I, I, I love the answer. Uh, then uh, as a last question, uh, let's end it on a personal note. Uh, how do you personally stay inspired and motivated to keep building these outstanding teams? I would say that I'm like super busy because my job is like really, really intense. And I also have two young kids to take care of. So uh, I think that the most powerful tool is actually this. This ecosystem is so important. And I really take the time to connect and really discuss and, and um, uh, exchange with some HR leaders on their practices, their challenges, and how they are, they are working uh, on that, um, that topic. So of course, I read and, uh, and I listen podcasts. But I think that the most powerful tool is really to stay connected in the ecosystem. Thank you so much uh, for everything. Thank you for explaining what outstanding teams means at Quanto. Um, yes, we're done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks again.